It is time for another magical April. If the uh, azaleas, I don't fuck, I'm saying I can't do it. I'm not Jim Nance. I'm Degenerate 75. What's up, guys? I am here for the Masters. It's been a hell of a six weeks for the big guy. Yeah, it has. Do I got a fucking port in my chest? Yes, I do. And I don't give a shit because you know what? I love PGA DFS and I sure as shit love the Masters. And I'm not going to miss a chance to do what I love simply because of shit that's going on in my life. I wanted to be here. I'm, I'm here for you. We're going to get through this. Am I going to do Q&A? Probably not. The big guy's already exhausted. Is the editor sick too? Yes, he is. So we don't have the editor. So the show might be a little bit different than normal. We're also on StreamYard because we're over here on Ship It Now. So the show might have a little bit different of a vibe. Just roll with me. I'll give you everything you need to know to be successful okay first things up let's get uh, let's switch over to the schedule i've got backup editor here holding me holding my hand because i can't do all this shit here's what you need to know this is the emergency stream i do this every wednesday well when i'm not dying and i try to be here when i can be healthy i will do this every wednesday night at seven o'clock that's in the lord's time zone but the important thing i want you to know is i am the king of showdown when it comes to pga right and if i'm going to be the king of showdown will you best believe that i am going to be doing round three and round four showdown but i can't do it right now due to my conflicting schedule with health issues so my dude gs luke is going to be filling in for me it'll be every friday and saturday night at the conclusion of round two and round three so the schedule over here is still pretty accurate use it okay let's get going with a very simple question for all my new guys guy in back. i haven't seen that guy in weeks he's been he's been exhausted he's just been sitting back here i've barely been feeding him i'm sorry about that he's getting double 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 food tonight for the guy in the back here you go, new guy. I got a simple question for you. Welcome to the team. Don't answer this. Don't answer this wrong. I'll kick your ass straight out of here. You ready? Have you made your lineup yet? You have, new guy. I know you have. Those prices have been out way too long for your slapdick ass to have the discipline to make your lineups. Now, if you've been messing around and tinkering around with it, that's fine. But if you've already married to your lineups, you're screwed. You do not make your lineups until you watch the stream and get all the pertinent, relevant information you need. So let's shut the fuck up and let's get going. By the way, no fuck counter. Even all, even all my sounds are dead. I'm not yelling donkey chow. Deal with it. Deal with it. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is contest selection. Let's not lie, man. I, 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 look, I, I, I was the first. I, I've been hating on DraftKings since before it was cool, okay? But really, they put us out some great contests this week. Even the big $10 millionaire maker, which you know me. I'm a big millionaire maker hater. Uh, it's, it's, honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, the, the, the payout structure drops off real quick, but that's going to be in any millionaire maker, right? But I'm telling you, this is such a great week to go play in all these little smaller contests down here. Go sort by total prizes and quit worrying about these ones with hundreds of thousands of prizes and just go down here and check some of these bad boys out. A $5 single entry, $20 three max, $12 single entry, uh, all kinds of fantasy golf world championship tickets to taste. A $3 three max, no matter what your budget is, they have well-structured contests this week because they know how many people are playing. So please listen to me. Go get into well-structured contests. Quit dreaming about always winning a million bucks because everybody right now is all excited. We're on uh, Masters Eve and everybody who wants to, I'm going to win all this money. And really, I don't think that should be your goal. Of course, I want to win money. You want to win money. But don't worry about trying to always hit the million. Worry about hitting some nice singles and doubles and you will find PGA DFS to be the most fun and sustainable sport out there. Please, I implore you, okay? As always, look at the st structure of the contest, right? The big $5 this week, which by the way, it's filling up pretty quick. It only has about 22,000 spots. And with as many people out there as tonight, you know, this is the this is the this basically the, the the small Millie Maker this week, right? And it's a pretty good payout structure. Look, only 16% to first with 100,000 up top. Second is half of first and 10th is 150th, right? So it falls off pretty quick. We'd rather that be 110th. Even with this being a much better, well-structured contest than the Millionaire Maker, look, you've got to beat 142,000 people. And I've seen this movie once or twice. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you ain't going to fucking beat it, right? Uh, if you're playing in this, if you're playing 150 in this, you should be playing 150 in this every week because you have to play this numerous, numerous times to see the payoff in the long run. So once again, new guys, it all starts. If you want to quit being a deposit king, it all starts with making well, uh, making good destructions, good decisions and well-structured contests, okay? That's it. That's that's contest selection. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and harp on it. We got too much shit to talk about, all right? New guy, chance of redemption. Guy in the back's already yelling the answer. Here's your second question coming right at you. What's the first thing we always check at PGA DFS? Very good, new guys. All right. I, hey, I'm going to give you, a, I, I'm not going to give you too much credit because I see everybody in the industry talking weather now. Okay, I'm the guy that made weather cool. First up, they're in Augusta. Okay, that's, that's in Georgia. It's almost in South Carolina. Didn't realize how Eastern it was in Georgia. And here's the answer. We're going to have some spicy weather, all right? But there's a lot. This, this isn't going to be your normal weather breakdown that you normally get from me. Normally, what is it? It's PM, AM, or AM, PM, right? We're just trying to get any little edge we can to get our guys out there on the best course, uh, on the course when it's at its best, right? But 
is going to be spicy and it's going to be really tough to predict. And you're going to see in a minute, this isn't traditional waves, right? We don't have traditional waves. They're not going to be going off one and 10 with a morning wave and an afternoon wave. They don't do that, Augusta. They all go off one. Augusta, all about that tradition. Now, they could get really far behind, you know, say the first two days are rained out and they got to get this tournament in. Well, then, yeah, they might start splitting them up and going off one and 10. But I'm pretty confident they are going to get all of this done uh, by Sunday night. Pretty confident. So Thursday, it looks spicy. I am seeing that it is going to be raining basically up until noon, right? And then once it stops raining at noon, they're going to, yes, they have the fancy air conditioner underneath the course and it can dry it out and all of that. And that will help. But an inch, inch and a half of rain is going to take a whole, whole long time to dry up, even if you have a magic Hoover vacuum cleaner underneath it, okay? So I would say at best, and even when they do get out there, look at this weather according to H. Yes, I spend the $19 a year to give you the fanciest weather projections out there, okay? The little things I do for the little guys, you're fucking welcome. So here you go. I would say at best they're going to get out there by probably one or two tomorrow would be my guess. And so you're probably only going to see, uh, you know, maybe 75% of guys even get on the course tomorrow. And a lot of those guys will play like a hole or two, right? which isn't that bad because you got to remember this time of year, we have a lot longer days. So they could probably get most of that caught up by a lot of these guys playing, you know, somewhere between 27 to 36 holes on Friday, right? You finish up your Thursday round and then you just kick over and start playing your Friday round because it's staying dark till it's staying light until almost eight o'clock local time, right? So they have time to get caught up. Problem is, is there's also a chance of storms Friday morning, push and play back another hour or two, right? So it's going to be very, very difficult for them to get through 36 holes if there is a rain delay on Friday and Thursday morning, right? So that's the big thing to be watching. I hope that we just get the delay Thursday morning. Then they, we can just get a full day of golf on Friday, and they might actually have a chance to get to the cut line of 36 holes by Saturday morning. And then I don't think we're going to see any rain the rest of the weekend. Matter of fact, the weekend looks quite a bit better than Thursday and Friday, right? So how does this all play into it? Well, I think the big thing you want to know here is that it's uh, it's 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 going to be it's going to be tricky trying to nail it, right? With there not being true waves, A and PM, right? Let, let me just show you a quick example so you guys can know what I'm talking about here. Is this is this the right one? When you go look at this real quick, you see, like, uh, let's look at my dude Dustin Johnson right down here. You see him at the bottom? He tees off at 2 o'clock tomorrow. He is literally in the last group. Him, more Flower, and Fleetwood are the last ones going out tomorrow. I would be very surprised if they even touch the course tomorrow. But when they do, once they do, then look, then they go out there the next day and they're middle of the pack. Notice they go out at 11. So to say that DJ is AM or is PM AM isn't really true, right? It's almost like he's PM PM. And when we get the weather delays, it might even be different than that. So we really don't even know where these guys are going to be. Because in a traditional one, you go, if you're the first one out, you're the last one out, blah, blah, blah. But with this way, with everybody going off of one notice, nobody's going off T10. It is going to be everybody going off. So if you want to attack this, if you want to try to find a weather edge in this, I encourage you to look at like micro groups, okay? Put these guys into like, put each of these into groups of sixes, right? Which is basically like an hour, right? Take take these groups right here and maybe go uh, uh, these last six groups here and try to make a lineup out of this with guys that you like. So if somehow these guys end up finishing Saturday morning and say they get nine holes in Saturday morning and it's the nut conditions, uh, actually a better example of that would be these guys. The guys who have the like, like Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland, Cam Smith, Xander, Scotty, Rory. If they do get delayed and this goes all the way to Saturday morning, I mean, it's not going to surprise me that those guys are going to be out there in nutted conditions, still finishing their second round, and then they'll get to go play their third round out there. So if there is big delays the first few days and some guys are going to get pushed to Saturday, I think the biggest edge is going to be for these guys who have the late round two times. That's your Wyndham Clark group, your Scheffler group, your Rom group, basically half your studs, right? These are going to be the groups. So if you're buying that this could get pushed all the way to Saturday, I think these guys might get some of the best weather uh, window out there, these last five or six groups that are going out late. Does that make sense? All right. So then on the flip side, maybe you want to, with the weather being that crazy, maybe they'll be out on the course by 11 tomorrow. And these guys who have, who go out early are going to end up having the better ones. Let's go back over to my boy, DJ. It could work out that maybe DJ being the last one out, maybe he gets to play his conditions almost all 36 of his holes on Friday. And the weather's not as bad as we think. And Dustin's playing great that day. And that could be it. And if he is, he will be strongly correlated with these guys, these six groups right here, because they will all be out on the course at the same time, right? That's what you need to remember. The first two days, they're going to go in order. We can't predict where they're going to be going off Saturday and Sunday. But we could say if there's enough delays, the guys that are most likely to have some of the rounds pushed into Saturday are these late guys. Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland, Cam Smith, right here. It's all right here on the fucking screen. Just look at it, Bob. So is this the PM AM week? No. But this is a chance to maybe try to play little microwaves, okay? Little, you can tell I'm hungry. I just said microwaves. My belly, blah, 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 blah. So that's what I'm looking at, right? I am trying to find little clusters of guys that might be there. And I am thinking that round three will probably conclude uh, Saturday morning. That would be my guess. Now, if there's no rain Friday morning, they might be able to get it done Friday night. But if we start to see that there's going to be rain, we know there's going to be rain all night uh, for Thursday. And if we also see it Friday morning, I don't see any way they're going to get all, what, 90 players through through this uh, by Saturday morning. And then I want my guys out there Saturday morning finishing up their third round. 
Okay, because it's going to be a lot nicer that day. Look at those winds compared to these other days, right? And you do not want to be playing Augusta in the wind, right? And, it, and the course will still be plenty soft Saturday morning. So uh, that's just one angle to consider. Just trying to throw something at you. It is not one of those weeks where you should go all in on AM, PM, or PM, AM, because really that doesn't even exist. As you can see, a guy like Eric Von Royen goes off at 8, and then the next day he goes off at 11. So he's basically AM, AM, right? That's just how they do the tee times, though, okay? All right, that is enough about weather. If you don't think weather matters, we've been tracking this shit. Uh, at the last tournament, Valero, there was a two-stroke difference. You're like, no, no one can tell that. Yeah, well, and if you're a fucking moron, you can't tell that. Uh, we we had it we had it pegged. It's easy. We do this crazy thing called paying $19 a year and checking the weather. And look at this. Guys who were in the better way, 65% to 35%. That is a 30% edge, 30% uh, uh, better chance of the guys, the cheap players making the cut last week than these guys. Over 9,000. The good players, look at this. The bad players in the bad way actually outperformed the good player ways. Because once again, bad weather conditions do not harm good players as much as it does the slap dicks. And then overall, a 22% difference. Guys, if you're not looking at the weather and not considering it in a game that's literally played fucking outside, you don't know what you're doing. You need to start looking, taking this weather more serious and trying to find these edges. Okay, because I promise you, a weather edge is infinitely better than your stupid picks or anybody's picks that you're playing, okay? All right, let's get over to it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to well, let's let's jump to ownership, right? As you can see, uh, the, the the key to me when it comes to PGA DFS, right, is really learning the art of the pivot. A pivot is when somebody's going to be highly owned. Who is a guy in that same range as them that you could go play that is relatively lower owned at the same ability and who could score or outscore the guy? And we've been tracking this all year. Uh, last tournament we looked at was Iceberg, Connors, Norn, and Betts, and you can see they not one of them outperformed over 50% of their pivots. So if you just took the pivots, you were going to beat them at least half the time. You're like, well, 50-50 means it's the same. No, it doesn't because you're playing Iceberg at 34% and you could have played a pivot at 16%. You're playing Bez at 22%. You could have played uh, his pivots were only 10%, right? And if you want to know for the year, for the entire year, we've now tracked this for, I believe, 11 events, 12 events. You can see the only the only range in which the studs are outperforming the pivots, right? The, the donkey chalk is outperforming the pivots. Only one spot. It's the 10K and above, right? And that's basically just Scotty Scheffler being a fucking animal every week, right? But after that, you're almost it's almost 50-50 or higher that the pivots are outperforming them. And notice, we're taking a big pool of pivots around them. So it's not just like this is a one-off. This is like a big trend we're noticing. Learn the art of the pivot. The answer is not to always pivot. It is not. You, there, there will be some donkey chalk that will absolutely smash the shit out of it this week. The key is when to play donkey chalk, when not to play donkey chalk, when to pivot, and when not to pivot. Learn the art of that because the art of the pivot is where the game is at. All right, let's get over to ownership. And yes, I have no sound effects. And no, I am not yelling. This is taking all the courage I have to even be on here. But here is my eight highest owned guys and two honorable mentions. Okay, Benny and Denny are not uh, that rated now. Let's see if I can put an HM in there. Honorable mention. Look at this. Just making it up on the air. Once again, the editor's out, so it's going to be a shit show in here. Uh, all right, first stuff, we got old Scotty Scheffner coming in at 28.6%. Okay, well, here's the easy answer. Just go look at those top five guys, right? Everybody that's in five digits, nobody wants to play them. Nobody wants to play Rom. Nobody wants to play Rory. Nobody wants to play Victor. Nobody wants to play those guys. And, and Scotty Scheffner is everybody's little care bear. Like, oh, he makes me so warm and safe. And I get it. The guy's a fucking animal. He kills this course. He kills every course. He's a tee degree monster. He's creative. He doesn't put himself in bad spots. How could he ever do bad? Probably won't. He probably won't. Seems like T12 is about as bad as he could possibly do. But I don't care. When I see, when I see 28.6%, when the next highest guy is barely cracking 20, I hate to see it. But Scotty, you, sir, are donkey chalk. We don't play donkey chalk. We don't do that. The only guy, the guy in the back just going back back there going ape shit. All right, Scotty Scheffner, you, sir, are donkey chalk. I'm calling you all red. Okay, you're all red, sir. Our next one up, Xander Shopley. 9,900 coming in noticeably higher than everybody else above and below him. Scott, he's going to be an absolute runaway donkey chalk train. You trek in tomorrow. You'll see that more on that in just a minute. That man is donkey chalk. We don't play donkey chalk. I, talk, I need my sound effects. I'm already hurting my voice. And then this one, I can't believe that people I, – look, I, I have two guys in PGA DFS. When everybody plays them, I don't. When nobody plays them, I do. That is Hideki and that is Speed. Okay? And Hideki is coming in at over 20%. It's just going to be mega chalk. It is easy as hell for me to say that man – down the choke, and I am not playing a chalky Hideki Matsuyama who might, you know, quit if he strains his vagina. Okay, I'm not, I'm not doing it. You can't make me. You can't make me do it. Uh, Rory, uh, you got Rory here. I do not think Rory is going to get. Uh, do we? Did we? I don't think he put these percentages incorrectly. Are these aren't actual percentages. I do not have Rory and Rom this high. I think, I think these might have got put in incorrectly. Um, I think that we have them more like 14 or 15%. Once again, we had the, we have the ragtag crew trying to put this together. I do not have Rory anywhere near 19%. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go bring it up on the stone over here because this is kind of pissing me off. 
Uh, oh, maybe we do. My bad. It's shit nine. I, I, look, Rom and Rory, I'm just going to, I don't think either of them are going to get that high. I think you're going to see a lot of that ownership go to Scheffler and Shoffley. So I'm going to give them both, eh, eh, Chuck. I don't love it. It's a little high, but, you know, give them pretty high. But then when you have a standalone guy down here at 7'9", um, I think that you are going to see Matthew Fitzpatrick. He's safe. He figured out the thing in his driver. He left like a magnet in there or something. Uh, I don't give a shit. The guy is donkey chalk, and he looks like a giraffe. You, sir, are donkey chalk. And we don't play Donkey Chuck. Except when we do. Except when we do. Except when we do. Moving on from there, Jordan Spieth, not a chance in hell he's going to come in at 16% with the, with the rumors floating around about his injuries. He's going to be eh, Chuck at best. I, I honestly think he's going to end up being okay, Chuck. Uh, but these, uh, then we got Sahith. What have I told you? When you start seeing guys in the 7,000s who are getting that 15, 18%, you know what they're going to be. I love you, Sahith, and I still might play your ass, except your Donkey Chuck, and I'm going to have to really think about it. It doesn't matter if we play Donkey Chuck. It matters how we play Donkey Chuck. It, it, trust me right now. One of those five guys up there in red, I promise you, one of them is going to absolutely kick ass this week, and you're going to need them. So if you're watching this thing, and, oh, I can't play the guys in the red, you're not listening to me. The key is not to play all those guys in the red, and, and that's it. Okay, that, That's what you can't be doing. And then lastly, we have a couple honorable mentions in here. You know how I feel. When you get down to the 6Ks, I don't care who the hell you are. You should not be over 10%. There's all those guys down there are basically the same player. I would just pivot off of these 10, 12% owned guys and go play lower owned guys around them. Now, if you're in love with Biddy Ann, go play him. But, like, if you're playing, if your lineup is, like, Xander, uh, Xander Hideki fits to Gala Ann, like, you, dude, you literally are building the same fucking lineup as everybody else. Cut it the fuck out. You're giving yourself no chance of winning. So those two, you know what's coming. When you're honorable mention, you know what you are. Those guys are, they're donkey chop. And we don't play donkey chalk, except when we do. Except when we do. All right. So this is what's going to happen, guys. You're going to have dudes who are going to move up, right? If, if, if there's thousands of people who are going to watch content tonight. And they're going to see who's who's getting the ownership, who's not. And it's going to come down to who is going to be the guys who are going to get steamed up tonight, right? The guys who are going to move up in ownership and who are going to be the guys that move down. And the first one I want to tell you about is I'm going to go out on a big ledge here. And I'm going to tell you that Xander Shoffley will be at or above Scotty Scheffner ownership tomorrow. And it's the Holy Trinity. What is the Holy Trinity? A, is he best by pricing? Yes, he's 9,900. You get that savings, right? B, is he playing well? Yes, Xander is playing very well. And C, does he have good course history? He does. Xander Shoffley, you're going to wake up tomorrow and be shocked. You're going to be like, I'm going to play Xander. I'm going to get cute and play Xander over Scotty. You're not getting cute. It's going to kick your ass because Xander's going to be wildly popular. He is going to end up being wildly donkey jog. Trust me on this one. I think he might even pass Scotty. Number two, Tony Finau. Tony Finau, people are going to see his ball striking. They're going to see that he's been playing well. And honestly, when you just go look at the guys that are priced around him in that mid-8K range, he's just noticeably better than them, playing better than those guys. And I think that you're going to see him be the second and third guy into a lot of lineups this week. I project Tony Finau to up tonight. That wasn't bad. All right, uh, moving on. Lastly, Corey Connors. I just know one thing. Corey Connors at the Masters, his ass is going to get – I can just tell you right now, he's going to get steamed up. That's Corey Connors at the Masters. He's playing well. He has good course history. He can be like the fifth guy in your lineup at 7,500. He checks every box you're going to want to check. Corey Connors is getting steamed the fuck up tonight, okay? All three of these guys, I promise you, will come in higher than what I am projecting them right now. You're like, well, why don't you just go reprojecting? project Because then I, it's a moving target. You do it once, and then you kind of project how it's going to go from there. But if people are moving up, they're steaming up their ownership, well, then some people must be moonwalking. Who do we got moonwalking? Let's see here. Is it going to work? Oh, I got to go back over here, maybe. There we go. Oh, I, I, swap. I, hit, I hit it twice. Fucking sue me. We have Joaquin Neiman, all right? I know Joaquin Neiman's won like three times in the past three months, but people aren't living. They're, they're just not aware of live, right? And he's 9,600. He's overpriced for how people um, see him. So because of that, I think you're going to see him. He, he, he. He's going to move him off backwards tomorrow. I think he'll be close to single-digit ownership. Colin Morikawa, we have a pretty decent ownership. I don't know why people play this fucking loser, uh, but people do. I think it's just that 8,400 number. It got people initially interested in him. But when they go look at his course history, when they go look at how he's playing, and when they go look at the fact that he's a delicate little moral flower bitch, I think you're going to see him moonwalk quite a bit. And the last one, Jordan Spieth. I know my head is in the way, but it says Jordan Speed at 9,300. And here's the answer. There's a lot of rumors going on uh, about um, his uh, injury, right? And so because of that, Jordan Speed. Uh, I think he's going to be like maybe 10% owned. I know everybody thinks you've got to play speed at the Masters, but people see that little Q tag on DraftKings. You don't know what a deterrent that is for people. I think you are going to see uh, Jordan Spieth moonwalk backwards tomorrow. Uh, from there. Oh, I didn't even see. Oh, comments. Oh, look at all these super chats. Jesus. Where were these super chats when I had my own channel? Now we're, yeah, I got to share these. Okay. Thank you guys for your super chats. I appreciate you all. Matter of fact, let me go shout them out real quick. Uh, let's see. We've got, uh, 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 Hey, thanks. A, you mother father. Appreciate that. Uh, we've got fade. Thanks mother father. Appreciate you. Uh, where the hell's the other one? Yeah. What a chat we got going here. 
hurting my fingers scrolling back through this bitch. And we've got Jay Steele. Thank all of you for the super chats there. Much appreciated. Me and the ship it team appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to make them buy me dessert or something. All right. This one's important to me, guys. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the DFS tip than I normally do this week. Uh, then we'll get to the model and we'll get the fuck out of here, right? So the DFS tip this week is this. Don't let your DFS success this week define you if your master's week is a, is a success, all right? So many of you this week are going to say, man, master sucked. I lost money this week. All right. Well, that is a way to measure success. But here's what you need to know. All right. I show this every week. If you're playing in the main turns, the main 25, the main five, Sunday showdown, these are the main ones. Consistently, consistently, the one thing we find about all of them is 90% of people lose. When you go play in those big lotteries, 90% of people is going to lose. That's the best players, 90% of them lose. The average players, 90% of them lose. And the shitty players, 90% of them lose. So right now, no, right now, we're all excited here on a Wednesday night. We're ready to play. And know that there's a 90% chance you're going to have a losing week at DFS if you are playing GPPs. That's the tournaments. That's the guaranteed prize pools, right? So with that in mind, you cannot let that define your success or you're just always going to say, oh man, I never win. No, when you're playing in tournaments, you're going to lose 90% of the time. The key is that one time you win, you hit it so big that it makes up for all of it. But I want to use this chance to, to let you know that, that, that PGA DFS needs to be fun. It needs to be sustainable. And yes, if you do it right and you do it long enough and you can sustain your bankroll, you will get that big sweat. Don't let your success simply be defined if you got more money out than you got more money in. What should you be defining success as? Have you enjoyed listening to content this week? Are you enjoying being here right now? Have you enjoyed picking out your contest? Have you enjoyed building your player pool? Have you enjoyed building your lineups? Are you going to enjoy the next four days of watching golf on TV, playing some showdown, having a blast, checking your phone, tilting some birdies from a fucking donkey chalk asshole? That should be the fun end, right? Bullshitting with your friends about it. Maybe in your Discord, watching more content over the weekend for showdown. That should be what defines success, right? You want to have fun with PGA DFS. It doesn't need to be defined by if you simply win. When you win, that is the best part. I get it. I love winning too, but that can't be the only thing that defines success. If I break even this week and I have a blast and I got a full week of entertainment out of this and got the bullshit with my brothers about it and my community, that is a win to me. And I think you really need to change your perception around that. Don't worry about always getting the win. Play to enjoy the game and make it sustainable. And I promise you one day you will get the win, right? And then just on a bigger note, there's a decent chance I won't even be around for the Masters next year, okay? I have some very serious health issues, and this could be the very last Masters I'd get to play. And I am not going to take these for granted. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to have fun with it. And I'm not going to say, oh, I put in a, a 500 bucks. I only got 300 back. I always lose at this. This is no fun. It's not how you look at it. I'm going to think back to how much great content I got to listen to this week, how much people I got to listen to, how I got to do this stream and share it with you guys, how I got four days of sweats on TV, and how I just get to watch a beautiful golf course with amazing golfers hitting amazing shots. That is your DFS tip of the week. Change your perception to having fun and being sustainable, and the wins will come eventually. Do not let it define your success from week to week. That is what I have to say to you, okay? All right, let's get over to the model. Here's some things we're looking at the model. Every, I hear a lot of people talking about uh, this is a second shot course. I wholeheartedly disagree. I think this is a course where you get it off the tee and you get it around the greens. I gave very little emphasis to putting. I gave very little emphasis to uh, approach, right? Approach, the approach shots are hard. They're going to be a lot of mid to long irons. That is an important thing. But if you're not scrambling your balls off and being in position off the tee, you're already fucked and you're not getting anywhere. And when it comes to grass, yes, I did look at bent grass and I did look at three putt avoidance because even if you're getting a lot of greens and regulation, it doesn't matter if you're three putting everywhere, right? So with that in mind, that is my model. And shockingly enough, loser piece of shit Rory is number one in my model. Would have never thought that, but he is. Uh, Scotty Scheffner, number two in my model. Uh, you can see it's all right here. Uh, a couple things to note. I already told you Scheffner and Xander are going to be donkey chalk, which is Rom, Rory, Kepka, Clark. I don't think any of them get over 15%. Uh, Neiman, Hovland, Cantlay, Spieth, Zalatoris, Iceberg, all these guys in the 9K are basically forgotten because people want to play deck. Cam, Dustin. Thomas, all getting forgotten about. I mean, if you just want to play the game, especially if you're playing in some of those uh, big, uh, you know, the big 100,000 person fields, you need to be considering these elite golfers, right? Uh, Zalatoris is, is a guy that's forgotten about, but he shows up at Masters. Iceberg is just a guy who's shown that he can get it done anywhere. I do think Finau, Young will get a little ownership, but then guys like uh, Morikawa, Homa, Bryson, Burns uh, are, are all going to be um, getting it, uh, uh, getting skipped over, right? Lowry and Fitz will be popular. By the way, I've heard a lot of people talking about, well, Sam Burns and Scotty Scheffner's wives are pregnant and they might leave. I mean, yeah, they might, but like Rory might also be having his time of the month and he could fucking quit too. So like, I just don't worry about that shit, right? Um, if that happens, it happens. Uh, you know, if you, that's the reason you need to fade him, go ahead. But I, I'm not putting any stock into it. Uh, all right. Other guys, Tigal is going to be very popular. Fleetwood's going to be popular. Connors is going to be popular. Uh, no one's playing uh, Tiger, uh, Tiger, uh, Tom Kim, Ricky Fowler, Min Woo Lee. Uh, Rose, I, Batias, that's, and no one will play him. 
Uh, I think Adam Scott, Siwoo Kim, guys like that will be popular. It basically seems like all the ownership is pulled around 12 guys. So if you want to just go bang like two pivots, right? Go play your, your chalky ass motherfuckers. Go play a Corey Connors. Go play a Denny McCarthy, but then go mix in a Cantley with them because Cantley's not going to be mixed in with those guys. And yes, I know Cantley sucks, but if nobody's playing, you got sometimes you got to play the game, right? Go throw in a Rory. Get off of uh, get off of Scotty and drop down to Rory, right? And mix it up. That's just making one or two of those decisions in the lineup can be the big difference you make. Then you get down here to the six Ks, you know, I, Benny Ann, uh, we've already talked about, I, I would rather, you know, like instead of playing Benny Ann, just go look at like Seth Straka, go look at Keegan Bradley. Those are guys who play long, difficult course as well. Right. Um, and then really the only other one is old Denny McCarthy, which, you know, if he puts like last week, I can already tell you he's going to finish top 10 because the guy can roll the rock like nobody, but I wouldn't count on him to continue to roll that rock that well, especially whenever he's going to be five or six times the ownership of a lot of these other guys down here around. Him, right. So that is the model, which brings me to who is the one guy I am definitely not playing this week. Well, shit, I haven't even thought about this. Let me get a quick drink of this sweet of the water. That's good. That's snacks. All right. Fuck it. The one guy we're not playing this week. I, I said it earlier. Whenever everybody plays him, I never play him. Hideki Matsuyama going to probably be the third highest owned guy this week. Hideki, get the fuck in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not playing Hideki. No, we're not. We are not playing him. But it brings me to the more important question, and this is going to be a shit show because we're going to try to time up the volume of the show with me doing this, all right? The one guy I'm playing this week is going to be, well, a dude who's never played here before. Oh, you got to play somebody who's played here before. Debbie Dallas never do well. Well, I've seen this guy be a debutante a few courses, and he did just fine. I think he has the long – he's long and straight off the tee. I think he can putt like an assassin. I think he's pretty solid around the greens, and I just think he's a big star that's going to get ignored this week, right? So I think we need to go back to the Titanic one more time. Let's go. Let's go. I got a long video for you tonight. It's going to take us on a journey. Let's see. Uh, uh, editor. Going to America. Full house, boys. No. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Ah. Titanic yes. going to America in five minutes. Oh, shit. Oh, on, shit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Scott, let's go. Let's go. Wait, wait. Get wait. We're going to keep riding Scott. We're going to ride Scotty to the promised land. He never locks us down. And he's lucky as shit. Let's keep him on his cat. Lucky son of a bitch in the Scott. world. You know that? I'm not going to lie to you. In the past few weeks, I've fallen in love with Scotty. He's so good. He never lets you down. Top five every time. I feel like I'm flying when I'm with him. I feel like I'm so safe when I can do anything when I have Scotty in my lineups. He's just that one care bear blanket I need. And I hate to admit it. Hanging me over the edge of that boat just really hit home. And I think I'm ready to run away with him forever. I might play him forever. It would take an absolute disaster to ever get me over my one true love of Scotty Shepard. There would have to be something lurking in the water. Something who could bring down this mighty Scotty and change my mind. The hell is that? King of uh oh, that, that iceberg out there? Iceberg, run ahead! Jesus, get you hurry up! Oh, that's a sketchy looking iceberg! Oh, shit, right? You don't put the short guy with the binoculars, he couldn't even see it! What the? Mother, father? We're gonna hit this ain't good. This is not good! Every Wednesday night, we feel so good about our lineups, and what happens Thursday afternoon? I'll never let go, Scotty, except that this one time when I drop you to the bottom of the ocean for my new love and life. I promise I'll never let go. Bye, you loser. I've got a new, I've got a new guy in my heart. And that guy is Ludwig Iceberg. He's out there to wreck dreams. Just like our lineups get wrecked on Thursday. Iceberg's here to wreck dreams of Scotty Scheffler. The one guy who's playing this week, Iceberg's Masters. You need to get All right, there you go. Right, try to, try to put me back on the screen. Go back to the other screen. Okay. I, I did not practice that, I swear. Uh, all right, hey, just a quick shout out to all of our winners. Look at my new Hebrew, just shipping 50,000, Shalub 10,000. Unbelievable week of hits. Look at all the Ship It Nation flying. Guys, come over to Ship It. We have NFL, NBA, MMA, NHL, MLB, NASCAR college football, and of course, the best PGA team out there. It's not even close. And you can get all of it for such an incredibly fair price. 
Put lineup and put money into your lineups and not into your tout sites, right? Go to a place where you get the best team out there. Me, who, Tambo, all the people we have over at Ship It, the best community, the best family out there, all that we have at Ship It, and get it without paying an arm and a leg. Get it for $29 a month. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, yeah. And we have the best tool in all of PGA DFS called the Rosetta Stone, which has everything you need to know, both for week long and for round two, round three, and round four showdown. We've got everything you need. All right, guys. Uh, I think it is time for the outro. Don't forget to go sign up at Ship It. Don't forget to follow us. I want to tell you guys so much how much I appreciate all of the uh, positive energy, the thoughts, the prayers, everything you've given them to me. Please shoot some to the editor too. He is having his own issues. I appreciate every single one of you. I can't promise you that I'll be here again. I can't promise you that I'll be here at PGA Championship. I felt like shit today, and I still want, I'm still i still here because fuck chemo and fuck cancer. Actually, not fuck chemo. Chemo's cool. It just makes you feel like shit. Fuck cancer. We will beat it together. We will fight. We will remember. We don't get to control life but we get to control how we react to it. So I appreciate every single one of you. Continue to stand by me. I will stand by you. I will always do my best by you. It's been real. I'm cutting it off short. I'm not feeling so hot. I kept it to 30 minutes. Thank you again. Let's have a nice, peaceful outro. I love you all. Play that master's music for me. <laughs>